Yes. Okay, good. Um, so I just, this is a little bit about me. Um, I have two sites that I basically manage. Kurt mentioned awarenessascending.com. This is um, sort of a learning platform for learning about uh, the various aspects of awakening. And Kurt mentioned meditation. And I actually, one of the, the other thing that I do with clients is I use a technique called neuromeditation where we actually measure brain waves in real time and we match them against uh, meditators who are long-term meditators in a specific style to achieve specific outcomes because uh, meditation is just such a messy word we have a lot of messy words these days it's it is defined differently by so many different people but uh, basically it's mental training for a specific outcome um, and I can talk a lot about that later, but that's one of the things that I do. I do these holographic field scans for people, which uh, is an iteration on my long standing history as a health coach and a biofield health coach. And um, what ran concurrent with that uh, work as a health coach was um, a podcast I'd started years ago called the Quantum Yoga Podcast that focused on the the science behind consciousness and how it intersects with uh, the subtle energy of the body. And so all of that stuff is available for free at Awareness Ascending. I think there's 60 episodes. There's some people on there that you may have heard of, like Bruce Lipton um, was probably the most popular guest. But these are mostly scientists that are are measuring things in the lab. And, and so that that was a big interest for me was how do I... Um, how do I make sense of what can be measured um, that's not just theoretical? And there's a lot that's been done, but it just doesn't fit into the way the world works. It doesn't fit into how um, our health and healing system exists today. Uh, you know, I imagine Kurt's probably spoken a little bit about this, but, you know, the we basically live in a pharmaceuticalized medical uh, establishment. And anything that isn't part of that establishment is seen as a threat. And so there doesn't mean because people haven't heard of alternatives that alternatives aren't viable. Uh, it's, it just is really more of a testament to how well uh, the pharmaceutical system has destroyed its competitors. So they're really good at that. Um, but the holographic field system is, uh, is, is really kind of blow my mind. Um, so this is it, the technology called New Vision, and it's based on a couple of physics principles I'm gonna try to uh, succinctly address so that it makes sense. Because usually what happens when I, when I do a client session, we do this session and people are blown away by the level of detail that they get, uh, the answers that they get to specific questions or problems or issues or obstacles that they're having. Um, and then they go, well, how does it work? Like, this is crazy. How does it work? So I'm going to try to address that. How does it work question first? And so Kurt mentioned holography and holography is a pretty long standing concept at this point, maybe 60, 70 years old. And it, um, a great book that, you know, he was holding up the holographic universe kind of, uh, summarizes the origin story of this holographic field principle. But um, we're using that holo holographic field principle to scan a person's field. And I'll explain a little bit more about how that works in a second. Um, and then the second thing that it will do is once your field is scanned, it's essentially comparing uh, your scan against 50,000 data points that it has in its system and those data points range from physical dysfunctions, diseases, uh, physiological conditions, body parts that are affected, uh, medications, nutraceuticals, uh, you name it, any type of intervention therapy. But it'll scan the physical body, the emotional body, the mental body, and uh, for lack of a better word, the spiritual body, you know, more specifically, it's probably the astral component of the body, which is like one level subtler than the mental body. Um, so it'll scan all of that and it will compare those things together and rank order everything based on resonance. And then the third thing that it can do after this sort of diagnostic component is 
if there is a therapy or a solution within the database, we can actually send the information of those of those therapies to a person's hologram. And when the hologram receives that information, it's like a piece of code that um, instantly gets absorbed or written into a person's operating system. And the moment that happens, it's mirrored immediately in their physical body because the universe is holographic. And, and I'll explain a little bit more how holography works in the next, in the next slide. But the history of this device is that um, about 15 years ago, there was a, a, uh, a few MIT engineers that were working for the tulip industry in the Netherlands. And this is, sounds bizarre, but this is how it came about. And if anybody knows anything about the tulip industry, you know how big that is in the Netherlands and how big it used to be. Uh, so they are trying to maximize crop yield and essentially minimize the amount of critters that they're killing in the fields as they go through the harvest. So these guys devised this software program. And this is what, it's not a hardware device, it's a software device. And they set frequencies to the fields, the GPS coordinates of the fields, telling the rabbits and the rodents don't live here. And it worked. And so uh, they, it's like, go live somewhere else and stay away. So that continued on for a number of years in a naturopath in the U.S., Gwen Foster, she licenses technology for uh, health and wellness. So that's sort of the background of the software. But um, in the book, The Holographic Universe, you'll you'll if you were to read that, you really only need to read like the first couple of chapters to kind of get what the principle is. And it was a convergence of Carl Pribram's work, who was a famous neurophysiologist, and David Bohm, who was a famous uh, quantum physicist, kind of separately proposed these ideas and then learned about each other's papers and started collaborating on that work. And it continued, that collaboration kind of continued, and David Bohm ended up writing a book about it called Wholeness in the Implicate Order, which is a phenomenal book. Uh, but it's essentially his, um, you know, opus work at the end of his life for explaining the integration of the holographic field and how it integrates quantum physics and classical physics together. So it's sort of a unity uh, principle. Uh, but, you know, you can see this Star Wars kind of image right here in the center. And most people think of a hologram as a three-dimensional projection. And, and that's true, but that's really sort of the after effect of what a hologram is. To actually create a hologram, you can see on the bottom right here, you take a laser, you shine it through a beam splitter, it goes in two directions. One of the, one of the beams goes to the object that you wanna project and the other one bounces off of a mirror surface. And when they converge on that plate, the, the image gets imprinted onto that plate. But what's the most important component, at least in, in relationship to the new vision scanner is that that information that's encoded on that holographic plate is essentially you could cut the plate in half and when you shine the light the laser light through each half the whole the whole hologram will appear on the other side so you essentially will have two and it does not matter how many times you slice that plate million times five million times the smallest the smallest increment of that plate contains the information of the whole. And that is the most important holographic principle that it is scalable at all levels. So essentially the part contains the whole. And here's a really good example that existed long before the physicists started talking about it. In uh, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, if you were to go in for a traditional uh, consultation, the first thing that they would do is they would look at your tongue, they'd look at your hand, they'd look at, they'd feel your pulse, they'd look at your ear, they'd look at your feet because they understood that the part contains the whole. You can look at the tongue and essentially diagnose a person's health. And it's not just physical when they're doing a diagnosis, they're looking at the emotional body, they're looking at the mental body. And to some extent, some things that are happening in the spiritual domain. You may have had reflexology on your feet, but you can also have reflexology on your ear. It's called auricular therapy. And there are people that 
get more from needling on the ear than they do with work done on their feet. And the same is true with the hand. So this is an example of how the part contains the information of the whole. Um, I talked about how it rank orders everything through resonance. And so resonance is a commonly used word, but just to be more precise, what we mean in the physics language is that when an object vibrates strongly, it will vibrate strongly when it's subjected to vibrations or regular impulses of frequency equal to or very close to its natural frequency. And so I put the, the parentheses in here. So an object being you, and the vibrations being the test items or the data points that are loaded into the system. When we send a test item to your hologram, the more strongly it vibrates, the higher ranking it gets in the system. Okay. And I put current instead of natural because um, people are not static. They are dynamic and growing and changing. And so who you are now is not who you were last year or even yesterday or next year or further into your life. So in, in an organic system, the, the frequencies can change. So, you know, tuning forks are probably the most simple, easy to understand example of resonance in action. You strike a 440 Hertz tuning fork and you hold another one that's exactly tuned to 440 next to it and the other one will start to vibrate because that or the original frequency is very close to or exactly the same as the second item and the hey, third Jonathan, principle i just yeah. wanted to you know it, it, for it, you know, everyone here is married and probably has experienced this in their own realm if you're in a room without ever saying a word or even looking at your wife, if your wife comes into the room as in a, in, as in a really shitty mood, how many of you have ever had that experience where you can feel it? And it's it's that same tuning fork. And so a lot of people will say, oh, the, 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 I got a bad vibe from the person. You know, you sit across the desk, I just got a bad vibe. That's exactly what Jonathan is talking about here. It's that tuning fork and you match that resonance. Or, you know, that's why someone can enter a room, be in a really crappy vibe and bring you down because you're going to resonate that second tuning fork, right? Will end up resonating with the first one. So anyways, I always uh, like to bring that back because everyone has that experience with someone and they'll say bad vibes, bad vibes, and then somehow not equate that to other things that you might be mentioning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Carl Jung's, you know, uh, well known for basically saying that um, whatever sort of darkness is, ref whatever darkness you see in another person, it being is being reflected back to you about your own darkness. Um, so you can't experience something that you don't have the ability to resonate with. So it's it's like not necessarily foreign that like that person is essentially just a mirror to resonate what already exists inside of you. Um, uh, it, this is also something that we see when we do scans, like I'll do scan on people and uh, the the level of intimacy one person has with another their married partner, their longstanding partner, um, you, you know, the sex, the sex usually has a deep intimacy that I'm seeing really cross over into this. Um, and the more bonded a couple is, the more of that other partner's information I'll see in their field. So we, we, it takes a little bit more time to parse out what is uh, like mine, if I was going to do skin on myself, and what is my wife's. Um, another example is the same thing with kids. So I've done a number of scan on kids. And kids' fields are really, really open. And it's, I've all, I see stuff in, uh, that comes down from dad. I see stuff that comes down from mom. And so if we're trying to figure out like what's causing this particular illness with a kid, it's like we have to, we need both kind of mom and dad present to, to go, okay, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. That's, that's unique to this child. Uh, the third component of what this uses is something called psychotronics or radionics, but um, there is a long-standing uh, physics organization called the U.S. Psychotronics Association. Um, they're at psychotronics.org, and um, 
And so to the board members, Glenn Ryan and Al Kropesky, they did an interview with me last month. Kurt was actually on that call. Um, and they talked about how psychotronics work. So if you want to go uh, just get a background on that, you can go over to that link. Um, just look for the replays at the Spiritual Science Roundtable. But um, essentially what psychotronics or radionics are, the, there are these boxes that essentially help tune a person to a target. So this is used in healing and agriculture. So I gave you the example of how New Vision started, its use in ag, um, but there's always a target. So in that case, it, the target was a plot of land. Um, but in the healing context, it's usually a picture or a piece of hair because that picture or that piece of hair contains the information of the whole person. So it's based on, you don't need the entire person present, you just need an aspect of them, a piece of them, because the universe is holographic. And in, in, in the traditional way this works is like the healer kind of uses an intention to heal something, the box tunes that intention to the target, and that person receives the information of healing and that healing exists that healing energy is scalar energy and so scalar energy is something that um, that that word came through uh nicole tesla was the first one to coin that word but this is a subtler energy than electromagnetic fields it can be measured people are studying it people are using scalar energy and devices for healing and other things and Glenn is probably who I mentioned in the last slide is the United States foremost scalar energy expert. He has an independent laboratory. He makes scalar devices. He tests scalar devices. So um, he's essentially figured out that the type of energy that is being sent is scalar. And we need to distinguish between um, energy and information so information is sort of the blueprint and the energy is the carrier frequency that takes that information to a person so um here i have a couple case studies to show you um that i thought were that i thought were interesting and this was somebody that i saw a few months ago <coughs> who uh is 32 she uh, wants to get pregnant, she wants to have an ideal pregnancy. Now, by the way, you can essentially put to this device um, any type of question in any context. Most people will come to it for, for physical health uh, issues, challenges, or just simply optimization. Uh, but some people will come to it with, um, you know, concerns around emotions or concerns around psychology or concerns with a relationship with a significant other or concerns around developing and growing their business or their professional life or 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 just generalized prosperity. And so it has a built in AI that will take that question. You can see here um, it's kind of in the top center it says, what are the best solutions for getting the rest of the question is getting um, getting pregnant and having a healthy pregnancy. Uh, but you can put any kind of question in there and it will take that question and map it against all these data points on the left, left center column. You can see all these data points there and then I'll show them. But folders that include uh, allergy sensitivities, homeopathics, pathogens, toxins, psychology, emotions. Uh, there's spiritual stuff in there. You, I mean, there's so much in there that I don't know everything that's in there. And it will rank order through resonance what the top items are. And so you can see there's two purples here, then a whole bunch of browns and below that some yellows. So purple means um, highly significant and acute. That this is, uh, choline bitartrate is a, is a supplement that uh, you can take for liver assistance, okay? So it's saying this is an important supplement to take now, but probably a week from now, that's not true. Um, I don't know what the blue demon alcohol entity is that just showed up in her scan. I asked her about that. She had been drinking a couple of nights before, but this is sort of a time frame. The purples work in a time frame of about a week, okay? Someone has a chronic issue or uh, they, 
they want to create a big baseline change in their life. We focus in on the Browns. So the Browns are stuff, they're either issues that have been longstanding or they're solutions that need to be um, implemented over a long period of time. The yellows are less significant and I really only look at those to get a bit more background information about the situation. And then the other thing to see here are circles and squares. And so circles are represent that the person has some conscious awareness of the issue or of this data point. A square means they don't have that or they're denying its existence. So the, the second item on here, it says negatively affected by electromagnetic ratio. This, so this is like, here's the power of this device. This person is in Santa Barbara. I'm here in Sedona. We're doing the scan. And this comes up essentially instantaneously. The scan produces the results. And I'm saying, uh, do you, you know, it's saying you're negatively affected by electromagnetic ratio. Does that mean anything to you? She goes, oh my God, that's so weird. Uh, I live on this ranch and the only internet connection that we have is Starlink and it's in my bedroom. It's like right behind my bed. And there's, there's no cell phone service. There's no other electromagnetic radiation on this person's property and they're on a hundred acre ranch. And then you can see further down three items from the bottom of Brown use EMF protection device in the home. So obviously that was the first thing that they that they had addressed. They were able to move that Starlink transmitter to a completely different area. And and then the other thing that really popped out to me was the this psychological component negatively affected by entanglement with a controlling person. I said, does that mean anything to you? And she said, yeah, I have a lot of problems with my mother, especially now that I'm thinking about getting pregnant and they're really coming up. And my mom is really controlling. And so that became pretty obvious that that is an issue that she needs to um, to address. And then on the more physical level, you can see free T4 too high. So this is thyroid hormone. Um, a few a few notches down, you can see estriol. This is est it's, uh, type one estrogen. And when I read that, I went, I think you're already pregnant. Um, she she has high estrogen and that will if your estrogen is high that will uh, affect your thyroid hormones and so it turns out that she was pregnant she didn't know it because so she was in this like period of not knowing um, and and so she ended up going away with a number of these items pinned these affirmations pinned to send that information to her a couple of the supplements pinned like the choline the mullein the panics ginseng, some of these other things sent. And then I ended up referring her out to another person to help deal with this controlling personality. So, uh, and by the way, if anybody has any questions, just open up your mic and let me know. Um, uh, that, that's amazing. You know, she was pregnant and we've done, we've done a couple of these scans and I was having severe stomach issues i mean just and i changed everything from a biological point of view and nothing and we found a number of things in this that that i went out and did emotionally uh some other things some other pieces and within like a week was completely back to normal and so it's it's absolutely amazing and i didn't even know i'm like i, I don't care and as you look this one one thing i want to i want to and, and they they address this in this book is you might say, well, it's just a placebo. You really believe in it, and so it's working. Well, isn't that interesting then? And why do we not study the placebos as much as we study any drug? And in the holographic universe, there's actually whole chapters about certain drugs. You know, in the UK, everyone here, right, in the US is programmed to say, if you're having a heart attack, quickly go and take a what? Does anyone know? If you're having a heart attack, go pop a what? Aspirin. Right. They don't do that in the UK. They were never programmed to do that. There, I, I can't remember, it's in the book, but it's a phenomenal, there's like 57% increase in death, even if you take aspirin in the UK, why? Because people don't believe, they haven't been programmed to believe that it works. I think um, ADHD medicines, all these other medicines, 
the placebos in some cases are 60, 70% as effective. So why yeah. don't we study the placebo? Well, placebos are you can't free. can't monetize it. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the placebos are actually real. And if, I, I was going to say, so what if it's a placebo? No, not so what. The placebo actually matters. And when I say matters, it's actually affecting your matter. So uh, it, it, it's really, it's really, um, I, I just can't, it, it's, it's been huge. And I don't even know how I was like, Hey, let's meet up. And you told me about this. I'm like, yeah, I'll try it. And it was like, boom. And we just did another one last week. And, and Chris Chimbers, who I know some of you here know, uh, that's how I found Chris because literally the stuff showed up here. And there were some other synchronicities that happened with you having a call with Chris right before. And, that, and so anyways, I, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but it, it's, it's pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, this, I think your case is, is an example. I would say it's probably it's the norm rather than the exception where someone's having an issue in one domain of their life. And when I'm saying domain, I'm, I'm classifying it as what level of the body they're having an issue in their physical body. So they go, okay, the issue is in my physical body. That must be where the problem originated and where I'm going to solve the problem. But we're integrated. We're integrated through the holographic principle. And so what's more common that I see when doing these scans is the thing that shifts someone out, out of that old pattern and into a more transformative pattern or a more successful pattern is occurring in another domain of their body. And, and it's really, we get this kind of redactic pigeonholed um, view of w how things should be. And the more we <laughs> tend to fo hyper focus on where we think the issue is, the more blinded we become to other elements in our life that are influencing us uh, there. Um, yeah, I know we're, I have another, I have a male case. I'm usually when I'm speaking to females, I try to have female cases. When I'm speaking to males, I try to have male cases. But um, this is just ironically another 32-year-old female. And this lady is um, was having upper GI dysfunction. Um, you can't really tolerate food, can't tolerate alcohol. was like a, how the whole thing started was just kind of interesting. Um, and was also hypothyroid. And so she came onto the call and I was like, how you doing? She's like, Ugh, my parents were just in town and they love drinking wine and they always have great wine. And every time I drink with them, it takes me like three days to recover. And so I'm just, I don't sleep well. I get brain foggy, you know, all this stuff. I say, like, okay. So that wasn't what she came in for. She came in for this upper GI dysfunction. And so um, she's telling me the story that how she's become, you know, overly sensitive to gluten and all these other foods. And uh, occasionally she will vomit um, and she there's there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to why it happened. She's gone through uh, elimination diets and SIBO uh, stuff and optimizing hydrochloric acid and bile and pancreatic enzymes. And it's just not helping. Um, and I said, okay, well, when did this start? How long ago did it start? And for her, it started about 15 years ago. Okay, what were the circumstances in which it started? And, and she was in Italy with her fiance and they were, and he basically backed out while they were over there, just kind of having a trip together. And, and that was the circumstance in which this whole, you know, downstream upper GI dysfunction happened. And so you can see the second, and so again, I'm focusing on the Browns because it's a longstanding issue. The second item here is negatively affected with entanglement with a negative person. And I said, do you know what that means? And she goes, yeah, it sounds like my ex. It sounds like my ex. Well, courting, something that Chris Chimbers talks about a lot and other healers that work in sort of energy, the energy medicine sector, energy psychology, courting is like, usually considered a negative thing where there is some type of bind or bond between two people that is negative. And so I thought that was really interesting that it picked that up as kind of the, the second item on the list. The first item being an affirmation for her to em employ. Um, so that was, that was really interesting. And I was like, oh, psh, you gotta go see Chris and get that cord severed. 
And the fourth item down was crypto pyro test. I didn't know what this was. Some of you may even know what this is, but uh, crypto pyro is a byproduct of hemoglobin breakdown, your white, your red blood cells. And if it is too high, um, it can cause people to accumulate copper in their body, which causes a whole host of problems. One of them being copper will, will prevent your body from absorbing zinc. They're inversely related to one another. If you have high copper, you will have low zinc. If you have high zinc, you will have low copper. So if you ever look at the copper zinc supplements, they're usually together in a specific proportion. So one of the other tests that I do for people is hair, metal, and mineral analysis. And it's commonly known that this is what happens. So um, that explained her hypothyroid condition, because if your copper is too high, it will decrease thyroid hormone production. And it turns out there were one or two other issues where where she um, needed, she was zinc deficient. It's not in this panel that you're seeing here on the screen. It was on another panel that we looked at. Um, inside one of these folders is a, a supplement panel. And it was saying, you know, number one thing to take is zinc. Well, interestingly, cryptopyrrole can be inherited from your family if they are alcoholic. I said, does that mean anything to you? Yeah, all everybody in my family is a high functioning alcoholic. They're lawyers or doctors and they drink a lot. And and I go, that's so crazy. And one of the symptoms of of having high cryptopyrrol is you cannot tolerate alcohol. You feel like crap for three days, basically. So she didn't believe it. And she went and ordered a serum test of cryptopyrrol and it came back high. So she sent me, she sent me the screenshot of her blood test. It was like, I cannot believe this is it. So it's simple for her. In her case, she just has to supplement zinc and B6, obviously stay away from alcohol. And everything started to rebalance in her system as a result of handling the entanglement with this person and also just adjusting for this cryptopyral um, uh, genetic uh, inheritance that she has. And um, the third case study I have here is a 55 year old male. And this, this is interesting. I, wanted, I was trying to provide different contexts that people ask questions. So this person went to like a kind of like a spiritual school and uh, they were a referral from another graduate of their class who I had done a scan with. And his complaint was he used to be able to access mystical experiences regularly, but he can't do it anymore. And so we had to go through a, a, a history kind of uh, intake of when, what was going on and all that stuff. And we put it in there and I'm, I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of, of hormonal stuff in your scan and liver stuff in your scan. And the liver basically manages the metabolism of all the hormones. And the first line item here, everybody can see is endocrine systems evaluation. Um, liver toxicity, a little bit further down. Thistlin is a liver supplement. Seeking Health Optimal PC Liquid is a liver supplement. Okay, norepinephrine is a hormone. Um, there was more going down further in the screen. So I asked, have you, I said, I can't, I can't see your body, but you know, I can only see your face, but are you your ideal weight? And he said, no, I'm not. I'm about 125 pounds overweight. Okay. Um, and have you had a hormonal panel run? He's like, yeah, actually I had one run, um, last summer. So not a year ago. And the doctor told me that my estrogen levels look like a pregnant woman's. I, well, what looks like happening to me with your weight being not ideal and this, this hormonal panel is that you have, and it was showing in another window that I didn't take a screenshot of, it was showing that he was estrogen dominant. One of the common characteristics of being estrogen dominant is weight gain. 
And it will also dysregulate a lot of other systems in the body when you have estrogen dominance. And what handles the amount of estrogen in your system is your liver. Well, he has liver toxicity, meaning that the liver is unable to manage and metabolize the excess estrogen. And, and in another panel, we saw he had some high uh, metal toxicity that was causing the liver to be downregulated, which was preventing the estrogen or preventing the metabolism of estrogen. So on a physiological level, that was going, that's what was going on. I'm going, I know it sounds weird. You're trying to access mystical states and it's talking about managing your hormones and metals in your liver. On the next one here, this is the psychology and emotions panel. And number one and number three items on here say abusive mother and father. And I asked him how his childhood was and how his relationship is with his parents. And he said, oh, it's good. You know, um, my childhood was OK. And I'm thinking, OK, well, they're squares, meaning he's either unaware of what happened because the trauma was so bad that he's uh, just kind of blocked it out of his memory or he is aware of it. But he's just denying himself how bad it was, denying denying to himself how bad it was. And he said, that's really interesting, because when I was at this spiritual center, they kept telling me that one of the the biggest thing that was going to prevent me from growing spiritually was childhood trauma that I had had. And and so, like, I didn't know that he didn't tell me that it just popped up in the machine. So I I don't I'm able to send the, the device can send some healing emotional um, therapies, some psychology stuff. But when it's deeply rooted, I usually refer those out to people who can manage that kind of thing. But so he's now on his path doing his stuff. And um, and I think those are the three. Yeah. So that's that's the three that I have. If you want to um, book a session, here's the web link for that. Um, anybody have any questions? Yeah, and I want to I want to put out there to anyone in the Freedom Circle who would like to book a scan 